hello everyone welcome to my channel so in this video we will be uh, having uh, ncrt audible that is audible ncrt uh, this is the chapter of biomolecules of chemistry S unit 14 biomolecules let's start we'll discuss it in every line of ncrt as well as the questions that come in the ncrt we'll also discuss that so it will be going to be beneficial and please watch my video subscribe to the channel and consider liking my channel so let's start it is the harmonious and synchronous progress of chemical reactions in body which leads to life what is a biomolecule it is the harmonious and synchronous progress of chemical reactions in a body which leads to life a living system grows sustains and reproduces itself the most amazing thing about a living system is that it is composed of non-living atoms and molecules uh, what is the most amazing thing about a living system is that it is composed of non-living atoms and molecules. The pursuit of knowledge of what goes on chemically within a living system falls in the domain of biochemistry. The pursuit of knowledge what goes on chemically within a living system falls in the domain of biochemistry. So what is biochemistry? The pursuit of knowledge of what goes on chemically within a living system falls in the domain of biochemistry. Chemically uh, within a living system that is a domain of biochemistry living systems are made up of various complex biomolecules like carbohydrates proteins lipid acids and lipids etc proteins and carbohydrates are essential constituents of our food proteins and carbohydrates are essential constituents of our food uh, these biomolecules interact with each other and constitute the molecular logic of life processes these biomolecules interact with each other and constitute the molecular logic of life processes. In addition, some simple molecules like vitamins, mineral salts also play an important role in the functions of organisms. Structures and functions of some of these biomolecules as discussed in this unit. The, in addition, some simple molecules like vitamins and my, mineral salts also play an important role in the functions of organisms. Structure and function of some of biomolecules are discussed in this unit. I start with 14.1 carbohydrates. What are carbohydrates? Carbohydrates are primarily produced in plants. Carbohydrates are primarily produced by plants and form a very large group of naturally occurring organic compounds. Very large group, not small, very large group of naturally occurring organic compounds. These are primarily produced by plants by photosynthesis of course some common examples of carbohydrates are cane sugar sugar glucose starch etc whatever is sweet in the carbohydrate is there uh, most of them have a general formula cxh2oy cxh2oy cxh2o whole y and were considered as hydrates of carbon and are considered as hydrates of What is the general formula that is CX has to a whole Y and were considered as hydrates of carbon from where the name carbohydrates was derived. Most of them have a general formula CX has to a whole Y and were considered as hydrates of carbon from where the name carbohydrate was derived. So th what is the general formula CX has to a whole Y and it is considered as hydrates of carbon so that the name carbohydrate was dis derived. For example, the molecular formula of glucose is C6H2O6 fits into its general formula C6H2O6. But all the compounds which fit into this general formula C6H2O6 is For example, the molecular formula of glucose is C6H2O6 fits into its general formula C6H2O6. Whole six, but all the compounds which fit into the formula may not be classified as carbohydrates. For example, acetic acid fits into the general formula. So the general formula is six H two whole. Why it is also applying to acids? So this formula is not exactly correct. All the compounds which fit into the formula may not be classified as carbohydrates. So. Um, 
कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स प्राइमरली प्रोड्यूस्ड बाय प्लांट्स एंड फॉर्म अ वेरी लार्ज ग्रुप ऑफ नेचुरली अकरिंग ऑर्गेनिक कंपाउंड्स सम कॉमन एग्जांपल्स ऑफ कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स आर केन शुगर ग्लूकोज स्टार्च मोस्ट ऑफ देम हैव अ जनरल फार्मूला सी एक्स एच टू ओ होल वाई एंड वर कंसिडर्ड एज हाइड्रेट्स ऑफ कार्बन फ्रॉम वेयर द नेम कार्बोहाइड्रेट वॉज डिराइड फॉर एग्जाम्पल द मोलिकुलर फार्मूला ऑफ ग्लूकोज इज सी सिक्स एच टूल ओ सिक्स फिट्स इन टू दिस जनरल फार्मूला सी सिक्स एच टू ओ होल सिक्स बट ऑल द कंपाउंड विच फिट इन टू दिस फार्मूला मे नॉट टू बी क्लासीफाइड as carbohydrates so uh, this might not be classified as carbohydrates for example acetic acid chcoh fits into this general formula so that's why it, this formula may not be ca- classified as carbohydrates and not only this c2h2o whole twice but it's not a carbohydrate similarly ramnose which is a sh- carbohydrate C6H12O5 does not fit in this definition. C6H12O5 does not fit in this definition. Ramnos. C6H12O5 is Ramnos. It's a carbohydrate that does not fit in this definition. A large number of these their reactions have shown that they contain specific functional groups. Ramnos is a carbohydrate, but this does not fit in this definition. A large number of uh, these their reactions have shown that they contain specific functional groups. Chemically, the carbohydrates may be defined as optically active polyhydroxy aldehydes or ketones. or the compounds which produce such units on hydrolysis. Some of the carbohydrates which a uh, sweet in taste are also called sugars the most common sugar used in our homes is made is named as sucrose whereas the sugar present in milk is known as lactose so um a large number of their reactions have shown that they contain specific functional groups chemically carbohydrates may be defined as optically active polyhydroxy aldehydes aldehydes or ketones Similarly, ramnose C six H twelve O five is a carbohydrate, but does not fit in this definition. A large number of the reactions have shown that they contain specific functional groups. Chemically, the carbohydrates may be defined as optically active polyhydroxy aldehydes or ketones, or the compounds which produce such units on hydrolysis. Chemically, the carbohydrates may be defined as optically active polyhydroxy aldehydes or ketones of the compounds which produce such units of hyd- on hydrolysis. Optically active polyhydroxy aldehydes or ketones. So, what is the best definition for carbohydrates? Optically active. They are optically active means they are having cardiac center. They are not having plane of symmetry. They are not having any symmetry. So optically active polyhydroxy is having so many OH groups, alcoholic groups, aldehyde, or it can be a ketone or the compounds which produce such units on hydrolysis. Or the compound that pre- which produces such units on hydrolysis are called carbohydrates. Some of the carbohydrates which are sweet in taste are also called sugars. So similarly, uh, you can say that the carbohydrates which are sweet they are called sugars. The most common sugar used in homes is named as sucrose. The most common sugar used in our homes is named as sucrose. The most common sugar used in our homes is named as sucrose. The sugar we use. whereas uh, the most common sugar used in our homes is named as sucrose whereas the sugar present in milk is known as lactose is known as lactose carbohydrates are also saccharides greek saccharum means sugar saccharum means sugar so uh most common used the sugar that we use in our homes is called sucrose whereas the sugar present in milk is known as lactose milk sugar is nothing but lactose we study this in biology also lactose is milk sugar milk protein is casein carbohydrates are also called saccharides greek saccharon means sugar so carbohydrates are also called saccharides because in greek it is sugar saccharide is sugar 
classification of carbohydrates carbohydrates are classified on the basis of their behavior on hydrolysis they have been broadly divided into following three groups carbohydrates are classified on the basis of their behavior on hydrolysis carbohydrates are classified on the basis of their behavior on hydrolysis carbohydrates are classified on the basis of their behavior on hydrolysis so based on uh, the behavior on hydrolysis we can classify carbohydrates they have been divided into the following three groups so now we are going to study classification of carbohydrates they have been broadly divided into the following three groups based on the behavior on hydrolysis we have divided into three types monosaccharides oligosaccharides and polysaccharides a monosaccharide means a carbohydrate that cannot be hydrolyzed further to give simpler unit of polyhydroxy aldehydes or ketones is called as a monosaccharide a carbohydrate that cannot be hydrolyzed further to give simpler unit of polyhydroxy aldehyde or ketone is called a monosaccharide a carbohydrate that cannot be hydrolyzed further to give simpler unit of polyhydroxy aldehyde or ketone is called a monosaccharide but 20 monosaccharides are known how many 20 and known to occur in nature some common examples are glucose fructose ribose etc so they cannot uh, be hydrolyzed they cannot be hydrolyzed into a simpler unit of polyhydroxy already they are simpler then how can they uh, become more simpler they are already simpler so they cannot uh, be hydrolyzed further so these are the most uh, simpler unit of polyhydroxy aldehyde or ketone so it is called a monosaccharide so about 20 monosaccharides are known to occur in nature some common examples are uh, yes glucose fructose ribose etc so you know ribose is present in rna ribose sugar it is a monosaccharide glucose monosaccharide fructose monosaccharide now oligosaccharide carbohydrate that yield 2 or 2 to 10 it will yield at least 2 or maximum 10 monosaccharide units on hydrolysis are called oligosaccharides the further classified as disaccharide trisaccharide tetrasaccharide so in oligosaccharide only if they give two uh, products on hydrolysis then they are called disaccharides three trisaccharides four tetrasaccharides etc depending upon the number of monosaccharides they provide on hydrolysis amongst these the most common are disaccharides the two the two monosaccharide units obtained on hydrolysis of a disaccharide may be same or different for example one molecule of sucrose on hydrolysis gives one molecule of glucose and one molecule of fructose whereas maltose gives two molecules of only glucose so uh, the uh, amongst these the most common are disaccharides the two monosaccharide units obtained on hydrolysis of a disaccharide may be same or different so you have taken a disaccharide it gone it undergone hydrolysis then it has given two monosaccharide units these two monosaccharide units may be different or may be same for example one molecule of sucrose on hydrolysis gives one molecule of glucose how many one molecule of glucose and one molecule of fructose so sucrose is a disaccharide because on hydrolysis it is giving two monosaccharides these two monosaccharides can be same or can be different but in case of sucrose they are different one is glucose and another is fructose whereas maltose gives two molecules of only glucose maltose gives two molecules of only glucose so it is also a disaccharide now talking about polysaccharide we have said that monosaccharide do not give cannot be hydrolyzed do not give any product on hydrolysis it cannot be hydrolyzed into more simpler unit oligosaccharides 2 to 10 Okay, polysaccharide means carbohydrate which yield a large number of monosaccharide units on hydrolysis are called polysaccharide. More than ten. Some common examples are starch, cellulose, glycogen, gums, etc. Starch, cellulose, glycogen, gums, etc. Polysaccharides are not sweet in taste, and they are also called non-sugars. Polysaccharides are not sweet in taste, so the, you can, can call it as non-sugars because it is not sweet. the carbohydrate may be classified as either reducing or non reducing sugars reducing the so carbohydrates can be reducing or non reducing sugars all those carbohydrates so how can we say they are reducing or they are non reducing all those carbohydrates which reduce failing solution and tolerance reagent are referred to as reducing sugars 
All those carbohydrates which reduce felling solution, tolerance reagent are referred to as uh, reducing sugar felling and tolerance. All monosaccharides, whether aldose or ketose, are reducing sugars. All monosaccharides, whether aldose or ketose, are, are reducing, reducing sugars. sugars. So all the monosaccharides, whether they are aldose or oh. ketose, they are reducing sugars. So let's talk about what is the tolerance test and what is Fehling's test. So tolerance test on warming an aldehyde with freshly prepared ammonical silver nitrate solution. So what is the tolerance reagent? What tolerance test? That is ammonical silver nitrate solution. Ammonical silver nitrate solution. Ammonical silver nitrate solution. Ammonical silver nitrate solution. It's nothing but tolerance reagent. So on warming an aldehyde with freshly prepared ammonical silver nitrate solution, that is tolerance reagent, a bright silver mirror is produced due to the formation of silver metal. The aldehydes are oxidized to corresponding carboxylate anion. The reaction occurs in alkaline medium. The aldehydes are oxidized to corresponding carboxylate anion. Uh, the reaction occurs in alkaline medium. Okay. So, aldehydes are oxidized to corresponding carboxylate anion. The reaction occurs in alkaline medium. The reaction occurs in alkaline medium. So, uh, you have to take aldehyde and freshly prepared silver ammonical ammonical silver nitrate solution that is tolerance reagent so w what is the positive test that is sil bright silver mirror is produced with the formation of silver metal the aldehydes are oxidized to the carboxylate anion this reaction occurs in alkaline medium so these points are from ncrt aldehydes ketones and carboxylic acids page number uh, 369 so let me show you so this tolerance and failings test is given in the NCRT itself in aldehydes and alcohols. We can check the page. Uh, so a bright silver uh, mirror is produced that is positive test for, for tolerance. So aldehydes gives but ketone sugars also give. Ketose sugar also give because I will say you later it will come in the chapter. Failings test. Felling reagent comprises of two solutions. Felling solution A and felling solution B. Felling solution A is aqueous copper sulfate. Aqueous copper sulfate. So aqueous copper sulfate is felling solution A. Felling solution B is alkaline alkaline sodium potassium tartrate rochel salt. So alkaline sodium potassium tartrate rochel salt. These two solutions are mixed in equal amounts before test. These two solutions are mixed in equal amounts before test. So, failing uh, reagent, it comprises of two failing solutions. That is failing solution A, that is uh, nothing but aqueous copper sulfate. Aqueous copper sulfate. And failing solution B is nothing but Rochel salt, that is alkaline sodium potassium tartrate. It is alkaline, okay. These two solutions are mixed in equal amounts before test on heating an aldehyde with Fehling's reagent. A reddish brown precipitate is observed. If you heat an aldehyde with Fehling's reagent, a reddish brown precipitate is observed. On heating an aldehyde with Fehling's reagent, what happens? A reddish brown precipitate is observed. Aldehydes are oxidized to corresponding carboxylate anion. These two solutions are mixed before the test. They are mixed in equal amounts. On heating an aldehyde with felling reagent, a reddish brown PPT is obtained. So, on heating an aldehyde with felling reagent, reddish brown PPT is observed. Reddish brown. Aldehydes are oxidized to corresponding uh, carboxylate anion, same as in tolerance test. But here, uh, uh, red copper PPT is formed. Reddish brown PPT is uh, obtained okay reddish brown reddish brown dark brown reddish brown aromatic aldehydes do not respond to this test so this aromatic aldehyde they do not respond to this test as cho plus copper 5 oh minus because it's a alkaline uh, sodium potassium tart uh, tartrate so you will get carboxylate anion and a uh, red brown ppt is formed because of cu2o and three water molecules red uh, reddish brown PPD because of Cu2O because of Cu2O so because of Cu2O reddish brown PPD is formed 
सो ना लेट्स कम बैक टू द चैप्टर बाय मॉलिक्यूल्स लेट्स टॉक अबाउट मोनोसेक्राइड्स लेट्स टॉक अबाउट मोनोसेक्राइड्स लेट्स टॉक अबाउट इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ मोनोसेक्राइड दिन प्रिपरेशन ऑफ ग्लूकोज एंड ऑल अबाउट ग्लूकोज विल डिस्कस इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो मोनोसेक्राइड्स आर फर्दर क्लासीफाइड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ नंबर ऑफ कार्बन आइटम्स सो मोनोसेक्राइड्स आर फर्दर क्लासीफाइड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ नंबर ऑफ कार्बन आइटम्स ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ नंबर ऑफ कार्बन आइटम्स यू कैन क्लासीफाई मोनोसेक्राइड्स एंड द फंक्शनल ग्रुप्स प्रजेंट इन दैम based on these two things basis of number of carbon atoms in the functional group present in them you can classify monosaccharides if a monosaccharide contain an aldehyde group it is known as aldose if a monosaccharide contains an aldehyde group it is known as aldose and if it contains keto group it is called ketose os for sugar right number of carbon atom constituting the monosaccharide is also introduced in the name as it is evident for the examples given number of carbon atoms constituted in the monosaccharide is also introduced in the name see in the table 14.1 different types of monosaccharides are given uh, central term aldehyde ketone number of carbon atoms if three triose aldehyde aldo triose uh, general term you can say triose because it's a sugar if you want to define whether it is aldehyde or ketone then you have to use aldo triose type for three carbon atom sugar that is glycerolaldehyde basically aldotriose keto triose for four tetros aldo tetros keto tetros five pentos aldo pentos keto pentos six hexos aldo hexos keto hexos uh, seven heptos aldo heptos keto heptos so these are all the just you have to uh, write aldo aldo prefix for aldehydes and keto prefix for ketone keto sugar ketone containing sugar that is ketos so let's see for five pentose right then will become aldo pentose keto pentose triose aldo triose keto triose tetrose hexose heptose aldo hexose aldo heptose keto Hecto, uh, hexos, keto heptos. That's it. So remaining from glucose onwards, preparation of glucose, structure of glucose, which is very very important part from these questions, I must. Uh, so we will discuss in the next video. So this was just a brief introduction. Each and every point of insight is covered. Thank you. Please consider subscribing to my channel. That gives me motivation to mix uh, and improve my videos. Thank you.